Thank you all very much. Thank you, delegates. Thank you, taxpayers. Very proud taxpayers, but I'm certain you could be just as proud for half the money. <laughs> Thank you, citizens of this great state and soon-to-be red state of Minnesota. <laughs> Greetings from Washington, where one week you're on the cover of Time, the next week you're doing it. You know, you go to your first committee meeting, you go to your first vote on the House floor, and it's very, very dramatic, and you look around the room and see all those famous people, and you say, I I'm not certain I belong here. And then after about four or five months, you go back to the same place, you look around the room, and you look at all those people, and you say, I'm not certain they belong here. <laughs> you, know, you know, the question before us in this first big reelect of the Trump presidency of 2018 is pretty simple. And it's why you're here, and why you put in all the hours and all the work you do. The question is, who can you trust with power? It's as simple as that. It's a straightforward question, but the differences between the parties couldn't be more stark. You see, my friends, Democrats seek power in order to use force. We seek power in order to limit it. And for some time, as you all know, our opponents, since about Inauguration Day, our opponents have been campaigning for 2018. The most radical of whom have crashed congressional offices, staged demonstrations, trespassed on private property, yes, including mine. You've seen it all around, even if the mainstream press hasn't. But I can tell you, that's why this means so much. That's why this re-elect means so much. Because while these out-of-touch, hardcore left-wing activists were up to their usual antics, we Republicans in Congress were actually getting things done. We've been focused on the job of getting this country moving again, and I can tell you, here and now, we have accomplished that job. We are growing again, we are prospering again, and people have more take-home pay in their checks again. In this 115th Congress, we passed the RAINS Act that says that if an executive branch agency wants to impose a regulation without a vote, anybody remember Article 1? Without a vote, it has to come back to Congress to get approved. We've talked about this for 25 years, we passed it. We passed 16, 16 Congressional Review Acts undoing Obama-era regulations, saving taxpayers and saving workers and businesses $3.7 billion in regulation. Anybody remember the waters of the U.S. rule? That was one of the first to go, although it's back in court, naturally. We have promoted economic growth, and now the Atlanta Fed says for the first time in over a decade, this quarter might see 4% growth. Heck, I've even reached across the aisle to, to reduce the number of federal crimes. The Constitution mentions three crimes. We have 4,500 federal criminal laws. And I'm working to reduce those because every single day, average Americans might be in jeopardy and not even know it. There was a fellow that wrote a book a few years ago called Three Felonies a Day, the average number of federal violations you commit without knowing it. So if I can work across the aisle to reduce the power of this nanny state, I'll do it with anybody. Yeah. And it's also true. It's also true that sometimes you're forced to take a few votes against your party leadership. And I did that. After all, I took an oath to defend one thing, and I intend to fulfill that oath, and that is the Constitution of the United States. So when it comes to reducing debt and deficits, spying on American citizens, and yes, fighting the Metropolitan Council of Minneapolis-St. Paul, I am going to be a reliable and independent voice in Washington, D.C. Now, for just a second, you might ask, what about your opponent in this year's race? My old friend, Angie Craig. Well, like most Democrats, she's trying to remake herself. But unfortunately for Angie, her true colors keep coming through. For example, Hillary Clinton's favorite lobbyist wants to take away your tax cut. She called it the worst piece of legislation in history and has vowed to repeal the whole thing. 
She's opposed to the Enbridge pipeline, crucial for not only this part of the state, but also for energy jobs in the second district where we have the state's largest refinery. She lobbied for Obamacare, wants to reinstate the mandate that we repealed, but now wants the full Monty, a single-payer, government-run system called Medicare for All that will throw seniors into a free-for-all socialized medicine system. She's even in favor of amnesty and opposed to work requirements. Now, folks, that's not having your finger on the pulse of Minnesota. And naturally, of course, Angie Craig opposes the right to life and liberty, and just as important, the means to protect both. Yeah, she even supports Nancy Pelosi for speaker. <laughs> Where do the Democrats get these leaders? There's only one response to all of this, and you know what it is. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Folks, it is time to finish off liberals like Angie Craig and what they represent once and for all and turn Minnesota red in 2018. <laughs> let, me just, let me just finish with this. The fact of the matter is, this Democrat party is now the party of chaos. They are throwing a collective temper tantrum because they're so used to getting what they want. Call it the empire striking back. But instead of reining in the darkest impulses from their most radical followers, Democrats like Angie Craig and Democrats in Minnesota have embraced their dangerous attempts to silence their opponents by any means necessary. That's why the stakes this year could not be higher. I will tell you, friends, a political movement which believes the ends justify the means in the attainment of power is one that can never be trusted with it. As I said, as I said in the beginning, the difference is simple. We want more freedom, they want more power. This election will determine whether we finish the job of restoring the American dream by upholding those sacred constitutional principles we all hold dear, or whether we will backslide down a slippery slope towards a country our parents wouldn't recognize. My promise to you today, as you begin this convention, is just as it was two years ago. I vow to never let that happen, and I intend to fulfill my vow. So, we cannot afford to let all the good work we've accomplished in just a couple of short years, we cannot afford to let this progress on taxes, on regulation, on the Constitution, on the Met Council, on almost everything that we've been trying to tackle for as long as we've been around, we cannot afford to go back. And if we don't prevail in 2018, that's exactly what's going to happen. The tax cut will be repealed. You'll have a single-payer government health care plan, and you'll have a quote-unquote impeachment crisis because the Democrats have nothing else to offer. Let's give Minnesota something else to offer. Let's make it red this fall, and let's go get them in 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job. Thanks, Jeff.